Ta da! Gorgeous. Whoa. That is gorgeous. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh my goodness. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Okay, guys. <laughs> My wife just brought me a present. So I've been so excited to get this from Behringer. They make some really cool looking custom wheels, but it's more than just the fact that they look good, which I'd want to use them just because they look good, but they are lighter weight. And on my particular application, Scrappy is a heavier cub. We'll make wings to match, but it's still a heavier cub. And I need some big brakes and the brakes that were on it um, work fine, they're a great braking system, but I wanted to have a bigger disc, bigger diameter disc, so that I could use less pressure and have a little more finesse. So here's my new discs. They're Same almost learn. twice the size. The others could fit inside of it. So there's the brake discs. And I have to resize all the calipers, which means all new brakes, um, brake master cylinders, get all this stuff out of here. Ta-da! Gorgeous. Whoa. That is gorgeous. <laughs> that is so cool. Oh my goodness. Because I decided to do this after the fact, bigger axle, bigger axle, bigger disc, bigger calipers, bigger master cylinder, um, to get the weight and stopping ability I wanted, it's exactly what I want for Scrappy. So I got a lot of work to do because now I got to remake the entire front hub assembly <laughs> where my front control arms attached to. Oh well, <laughs> it's worth it. It'll be a few days, maybe a hundred hours. We'll have it done. We'll get these wheels on. Let's get to work. Okay guys, I'm super excited. I finally get to assemble a totally new brake assembly pedal that we designed on SolidWorks. Um, drafted it up, engineered it, did an analysis on it. A lot of the challenge on Scrappy is now I've got a motor that's nearly 700 pounds and scrappy is a big cub it weighs a lot more than most cubs um, the braking system for cubs just wasn't quite enough great braking system but this is a comparison these brakes are strong enough this is a carbon cub assembly and it's absolutely perfect it has enough strength you could put the plane on its nose which means it has more than you need and uh, really lightweight perfect job so i'm going to set this there and then I wanted to use as many components as I could from Cub Crafters because they do a really good job at lightweight. So this part I'm able to use, which matches that, but I just lightened it up a bit. But on the back, this won't work with the fact that the bigger brakes I'm using from Behringer, this is gonna be the braking system I'm gonna use, but I need more fluid. I need to pump more fluid into three um, puck system instead of a two and so this is the Behringer ram I need to give you an idea to put the pressure and obviously this won't fit into there so I am using this but I cut off the back and I drew up in the computer this new part that will go right there completely changes the geometry of that part so I can still use this. And then this part, we had to design completely different radiuses out for the bigger diameter of this, make clearances for the lines, um, change the fulcrum and pivot points of all of it so that I get 100% of the throw on this, which is much longer so I can move enough fluid so, but I am using the same attach point that's from a carbon cup. So this bottom is similar. So the geometry is different. The height is different. Um, the way this is gonna go together, um, the fulcrum of the connecting points are all different. So now that I've made the change on top for this, I need to make the change on the bottom assembly. So I made a bunch of little parts 
This is just a little template that will go in the airplane, slide down, I'll bolt it, and that just gives me the alignment hole to drill the location for this hole so that it's perfect, absolutely perfect. I don't wanna try and measure it and use a scratch all to get it. So I'm making, I made an alignment jig to drill a new hole for the bottom of the pedal assembly. And then this, show you right here, this is literally just a part we quickly made so that once I cut and change the whole location for the bottom of the master cylinder, this can go into that new hole location. I can bolt it and then grind the, the perfect radius I need for all the clearances for this to pivot and not hit anything. So pivot! Pivot! That's a template. That's a template. This is the welded on parts my new pedal assembly, and this. We're gonna use half scrap parts off a of carbon cub, half, well, maybe more than half, uh, all brand new, and we're gonna put on big giant brakes. <laughs> it was a lot more work than maybe it sounds like to get all this done, but it's done. So I'm gonna finish cutting this apart, weld it up, start assembly, press fitting in some uh, uh, bushings into it, and we're gonna put it in the airplane and bleed the brakes. All right, guys, I wanna make something really clear while I machine these parts up. Scrappy is really unique and it takes a lot of custom parts to make. But if you've got a Cobb or any other type of aircraft, Behringer Wheels has got a kit and it, you don't need to make anything. Everything's included, just get online, search their site and you're gonna find better wheels, better brakes, more stopping power and you're gonna save some weight. Back to work. A dilemma. This is a little angle drill. It's about as small as I can find. If you know smaller, let me know. And it's got little teeny bits that screw into it. And it's not small enough for a hole I need to drill. So I got a bolt that matches this thread that I can thread in. I'm cutting it shorter. Then I'm going to drill a hole in the end of that bolt and then take the drill bit that I need to drill, which is this one, cut it short press fit it, then re-grind the tip and make my own little ultra mini drill bit. <laughs> Sometimes a five minute project turns into 25, but <laughs> let's get back to work. All right, so I'm pairing up two of my favorite aviation companies together, putting my Alaska Bush wheels and a Behringer wheel and brake assembly together. Typically, a Cub would have a disc about this size. This is actually a heavier duty one. I was hoping that this would handle the horsepower of Scrappy and the quick stopping I want to be able to do. Close, but about 75% power started to roll. So I needed to go something bigger. So Behringer did something really creative to get a larger diameter disc. You can see the difference, <laughs> significant, and the ability to hold more heat. The way they accomplish that, typically brake calipers go on this way, which means this needs to have room from the tire so that this doesn't rub on the tire, which is what dictates how small this has to be to get a hold of it. Of course, the smaller diameter, the less leverage you have to fight the leverage of a great big tire. What Behringer did, which is really creative, um, they eliminated all the metal that's on this location that bolts to the rim and moved that metal into the disc, created more heat absorption energy here um, and then enlarge the disc. The disc goes here. Let's see how that drops in. And then the big change is now the brake calipers come in from the inside where you couldn't put it on the outside because it hit the tire. So they just changed the location. Outside, 
to the inside and we increase the diameter to help us stop the tire. So really ingenious and utilizing the rim itself, they machined the billet aluminum wheel. That's such a good fit. So that it can receive this. So to put on a new disc, pull the wheel off, the one nut off the middle, slide this off, slide a new one back on. I'm really impressed, super excited to get this on. This system is for a 6,000 pound airplane. So maybe more than I need, but definitely what I need for the horsepower that's in this silly bird behind us. So let's get it installed, get back to work. All right guys, <laughs> I'm pumped. I got them on. Um, holy crap, 35 inch tall tires. If you guys haven't tried a set of 35s or 33s and you're running something smaller, if you haven't tried a nice soft Alaska bush wheel, go get it on your aircraft because we're going places we wouldn't have gone safer than we ever have been. Because if you put just a nice soft pressure in these and go hit some rocks, they just disappear. So anyway, I'm, I'm pumped. Thanks Alaska bush wheel for making such a cool product. Um, all you guys are starting new companies in aviation or promoting new ideas in aviation. Keep going. <laughs> we love you guys. Um, new products like new brake systems, new tire systems, new lighting systems. Every one of you guys doing something for aviation. I love you. Thank you. Keep going at it. Those who have something new that haven't come out, get off your butt. <laughs> Let's get them out. Introduce to the world. Aviation needs new stuff. Let's get back to work. <laughs> We got the new axles done. I'm really pumped about it. You know, I really didn't need to do this. We did the drop test, no problems. Taxied around the airport, no problems. I just didn't quite have enough finesse. Um, and I needed to be able to try and get near full throttle and have the tires hold. And I just wasn't getting there. So definitely, way, way overkill. I am adding a little bit more weight. Scrappy is not gonna be the lightest cub, but bigger motor, bigger plane, bigger wings, more weight, bigger axles. I didn't need to do this for strength, but I went ahead and did it. You can see the difference on a typical cub axle. This diameter right here would carry all the way down. This actually has two different sized bearings. If you were to get a rim like this from Behringer for a cub, both bearings on each side would be the exact same. This isn't a cub wheel. This wheel is actually designed for a Platus Porter. The reason I went that big, and I went through all the different available wheels, which was unbelievable. Behringer has so many different wheel options and they're so cool. But I was able to go through them and then pick out what I wanted for holding braking power and to be able to just have really nice finesse, to not have to just push on the brakes hard to steer it if I got in a rut or on a side hill and I'm trying to hold the hill or some bumps. I wanted to be able to just finesse the brakes and have extra stopping power. The way we made our axle on the inside looks similar to this. As a smaller hole grows larger, as this gets bigger in diameter, it takes more leverage to bend it. So it's actually thicker here than it is here, just bigger diameter here. So they kind of trade places, but that's the new engineered axle. So it's, Really cool, you can even see it right here. This pops off. There's a small size bearing. Flip around, <laughs> look at the size of the back. And then you can really get an idea of how big the brake calipers, are, the brake disc is. So I almost dub doubled the leverage on the wheel itself by going to such a large disc. I also got that extra metal and that metal gives me more heat energy absorption. When your brakes fade and go out, it's the disc couldn't absorb the heat energy from the friction of trying to stop it. So if you want to be able to have brakes last longer, not have the smell, not have them get slick, brake fade, it's the amount of metal to absorb the amount of heat to stop that forward energy. So anyway, hope that makes sense, but this has a bigger disc, so I got way more braking. Everything's oversized, so I had to remake everything. So I'm down to the final touch. You can see this one's getting ready to go together. A little bit of a press on it. Oh, Ooh. I might not need the press. This is actually not on because <laughs> it wouldn't be on because these aren't made yet. It's just sitting on the old one. But we'll just quickly weld this up, get it on the plane, put our 
new wheels, tires, brakes, then we're gonna go see how well these brakes can hold full power. So I'm hoping it can, we'll see. <laughs> Let's get back to work. to finish the last of the welding on this which is putting on my brake caliper um, plates I've got them clocked tacked but I want to talk about a couple little tricks if you get to machine and weld there's some little tricks you can do like this cap right here when I made this end plate I made it about a sixteenth of an inch small all the way around and that way if you get a real close look um, when I know I'm going to be the one welding, it's just nice to make little steps. And what that did is it made a little sharp double step 45, a little uh, 90 little step in there because this cap was short. That way when I weld and we go around it, it pulls the metal together and it radiuses the edge for me so I don't need to grind it. So this has got a really, really soft edge. And if I had made the cap the exact size... I would have been welding from the side and then trying to round it. It would have been a sharper edge. And if I went to sand it or file it, I could have cracked through a little bit. So um, that's one. On this one, you can see I did something similar. We just finished machining these axles. I made a double step for this plate. So it's like a, a socket that um, grabs on the outside. The inside has kind of got a return double step in it. So it goes on perfectly straight. But if you look real close, you can see a little bit of step right there i left that about 50 thousandths of an inch high so that i could have a little high corner so when i go to weld this i don't need to use any rod so it's kind of cheating welding so i i don't even have to hold a stick and follow it around i can just burn it out and that little extra material is the material i'm melting and blending that corner out and it'll make a perfect radius to a smooth transition so if your machinist and your welder can work together, life gets easy. So I'm going to get to work, burn these out. All right, guys. <laughs> I don't like having to redo things, but it's so worth it. It's a lot of work, but here's the old ones. We'll show you what the new ones look like. Um, this is the new assembly. And while I was at doing bigger brakes, you can see I went ahead and did a much thicker axle. It has big bearings here, smaller bearings here compared to this setup. Um, bigger shaft. This is a smaller shaft that had to have this gusset. Uh, when we did the analysis on SolidWorks, we did not need it on this one. So I saved a little bit of weight there, added some weight for the axle. All in all, they're not much different. I've now got a triple puck brake, much larger. You can see we machined these plates. This is gonna go on like this right there. And uh, three pucks. We had to remake these little hourglass fittings. They're a press fit. I'm gonna try and persuade them with a rubber mallet. If not, I'm gonna get them in the press and actually press them in. Uh, once those are installed, I can start putting the whole assembly back together. We made new bushings, new bearing bronze sleeves that fit, all the bolts. Went ahead and doing it all brand new, not using any of the original stuff, just in case I want to stick that on another cub sometime that doesn't have the horsepower the scrappy does i might as well have a spare set sitting around so i didn't want to rob those but i'm super excited we're done making all our parts i'm going to get it on the plane back on its wheels and go try out some monster monster brakes plus i'm super stoked they custom colored these for me so thank you behringer for some awesome wheels i think they look really cool and paired up with Alaska Bushwheels, 35-inch tall tires. Alaska Bushwheels, 
I don't know what I'd do if you didn't make those tires. And if you haven't run, big giant 35s aired down for going through the big rocks and riverbeds, there's nothing cooler than that. So I'm pumped, it's late. I got Josh in the background. Josh and Chris are now pairing up to help me get videos out. So we'll stay on top of that. But give me a few hours, we'll have this done probably just after midnight. I don't think I'll go out and start it tonight. <laughs> we do have houses a little ways away, but we'll get it ready started up in the morning. So let's get to work. Tomorrow, we'll start it up again with new brakes. All right, guys. Well, it took a little longer than I thought to get these on. Probably spent a good two hours. The tolerance is so dang tight, it just took two of us really working at it. But they're on, and they're just, well, the only noise we're gonna hear is that tire in the background, but we have no play in that. But uh, it pivots really nice. I'm getting ready to put on the Behringer brakes. So let's hurry, put them on, tie them together, bleed the brakes, put the tires on. I wanna get it back on its wheels because I need to roll this around in the dirt. <laughs> let's get to work. show you something else that's really neat about the Behringer wheels. This is not standard on most aircraft, uh, let alone a Cub, it's not. But this seal right here has a double lip seal and then the bearings inside here. And if you look at the custom axle we machined up, this is where the bearing rests. And the grease here isn't because it spins on this location. It's a tight, tight fit. The grease is just to keep rust out of there. Most of it will squeegee off. But this double layer seal compresses around this step. And so on this side of the wheel, we have two layers to keep all water, moisture, everything out with that super tight seal. And on this side to keep the moisture out, the cap has an O-ring in it. So um, there's nothing like this. I'm, I'm so impressed. It's more like automotive modern day stuff where you wanna put it on and run it for a couple hundred thousand miles turning indefinitely. So it's really neat to see it migrate into the aviation world. So um, Behringer, I haven't tried the brakes yet. So the verdict's still out. My expectations are pretty dang high. Um, but as far as the build, construction, water seals, gaps, dust, mud preventer, you guys have knocked it out of the park. So if everything else holds up, I may be permanently converted to Behringer wheels. So we'll let you know after I hit the brakes. Let's get to work. 